Hello and welcome back to another video. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. Welcome to the first professional reaction video we're doing on the channel because I finally learned how to do share tab instead of share screen on StreamYard. But anyway, uh, make sure to like the video. Make sure to subscribe if you're new. We're trying to hit 1k as soon as possible, people. But thank you very much for the support as of recently because we're nearly on 600. But yeah, we've. I said I was going to do this on stream and because I had to cut my stream short, um, big up to Omar as well. I was on his stream yesterday because you'll see this on a Monday. Obviously, we've got the player ratings for you. Uh, what we've learned from the game, the West Ham 2 1 Man United game, and we've also got this video reacting to Man United fans' meltdowns because listen, they're always entertaining. I might as well react to it on stream, it only makes sense to as we play Manchester United. And the people we're reacting to today is obviously the GOAT Saeed TV. But also Flex and KG from the United View. Uh, I was going to do uh, Rance's, but like, not that one. Fucking hell, pause. Um, Rance's video, but he doesn't have a match reaction video yet. I don't know whether he's going to upload that, but those are the people I watch anyway if I want to watch Man United content, Man United reaction videos. So that's why I react to them on stream. But yeah, let's start with Saeed, people. Uh, he's got Nuruddin and Faz, the double XL freestyle. Uh, type you know set up over here with the two in the background some would say these two are his bodyguards i don't know about that but listen this one is i'm done we are 14th rant oh uh, you just know that this is going to be a good one let's get straight into it i think i'm falling out of love with football <laughs> i think i'm falling out of love with watching this Man united team i'm on the brink i seriously i'm on the brink with this Man united team we are 14th. 14th! Getting Zar troops vibes from, you know, the lockdown days. And today, yeah, everything's going to be on VAR. VAR, VAR, VAR. Do your job on the first half, yeah? Facts. Take your chances in the first half! It's a 90 minute game. That's why I never talk about West Ham getting robbed on the shuttle because it's a 90 minute game. You can always. Like, make the other team not create as many chances. You can create more chances for yourself. It's a 90-minute game. I used to think like that as well. Oh, we've been robbed and all that, but it's just victim mentality. Second half, West Ham changed the game. They were the better team. Don't anyone fool you. We are 14th <laughs> for a reason. Yeah? <laughs> this is for a reason. Now we're on lucky side. We've got injuries. <laughs> Back the manager. He was on the players. You know, you know, I, I generally, man, we've been shit for a long time, but it's the lowest I'm felt as a United fan. It's funny, we're above them, I think, on goal scored. Not even goal difference, goal scored. I'm pretty sure that's why we're above them. We are 13th on goal scored. That's bad, you know. Like, that just proves how bad both teams were, by the way. We were on the exact same goal difference, exact same points, on the exact same games. And we've won the same amount of games as them, I'm pretty sure. They went against Brentford, Southampton and Fulham. We've beaten Man United, Ipswich and Palace. Yeah, it's a weird league. There's no enjoyment. There's no goals. And we've been beaten by West Ham. Yep. Yeah? Who have been shit all season. Facts. But yet we've been beaten by West Ham. Ham. Mm. Lopetegui is a dinosaur. Facts. This manager in the second half had zero plan. First half, the players are absolutely disgrace. Garnacho, week in, week out. It has to stop now. I'm glad people are seeing it because this guy's a scrub. Garnacho is a scrub. And yeah, people are going to say he's young. We don't talk about Yamal's age. Come on, guys. Do you know what the, the problem is? I've said this on many streams before as well. As, as well, like when Man United bring a youngster through, they expect them to be the hero and they prop them up like the hero. So the problem is, Garnacho has had all this unwarranted hype for no reason. Now, when they have a now when he doesn't perform, people are like, "What? But I saw you score this amazing goal against Brentford last week." They become moments players. They become moments players. This guy cannot be starting games. We don't have no goal scorers. We have a captain. Wallahi. Second half. Wallahi, Bilahi. Bruno <laughs> Fernandes. I said it's personal. This brother 
he's hoofing the ball. And in the final end, when he's supposed to get the ball back in the net, he goes and fucking launches it. You fucking whopper. You whopper. I haven't heard the, the word whopper in years. And I can feel Saeed's anger is genuine because I was laughing my head off watching Bruno Fernandes play in the ground. I was talking on the player ratings. Like, that guy, if we were doing Man United player ratings, he would get a zero because he is... Like, I know we complain about Packets. I complain about Suchek. He, Suchek is clear of Bruno Fernandes. Yes, you heard me say that. Thomas Suchek is clear of Bruno Fernandes. I'm not taking the piss. He is. Yeah. This brother, yeah. Let me tell you something, man. One of the most overrated players I've ever seen. There's a lot of players I've seen, yeah. I've literally said this exact same statement. The most overrated player I've ever seen in the Premier League. No pride in being a captain. At the moment where we don't supposed to keep the ball, you don't keep the ball. What is wrong with you? You're playing against us, my guy. You're playing against us. And a decision, we could call it disgraceful. It, it wasn't a penalty, but you know what? I've just come. Why are I you just, leaving it to the referee? Why are we leaving it to VAR? Why are we leaving it to VAR to, to, to basically seal our fate? Mm. What happens in the first half? One, two, three, four, five. One lie, there was plenty and ample opportunities to finish that game off. I said to Faz, I said to Nuruddin, second half, you can call it game over because you know why? West Ham can't be that bad. They can't be. They brought on Somerville, who should have started. Suchek, who should have started. I don't know about that. And the other player, Tadebo, should have started. Well, yeah, he should have started as well. They all should have started. Not all of them. Suchek should have started. I, don't know, I, I know people are now trying to turn the thing now that Suchek should start. No, he shouldn't. He shouldn't, but he gave you something different, I guess. But Somerville should definitely start. Somerville changed the game, like single-handedly, in my opinion. Gave you a different outlet, two wingers. That's all we needed. He should have started. To... That's why Nobateki's a scrub. All three of them, massive impact on the game. We are in trouble. We are in trouble. 14th, we are six points behind the relegation zone. Yes, we are closer to the relegation zone than we're to the top. That's a reality. <laughs> Ineos, I don't know what you're watching for. It's gone beyond telling you. Where's your brain? Where's your aggle? Yeah? You fucking hayawan, you tap ban, I'm going to you fucking shit. <laughs> fucking shit, you lot are, man. You broke billionaire, man. Fucking bunch of incompetent pricks you are, mate. I'll just say this simple. If any United fan is today blaming... If you're blaming, if you can look me in the eye and you're blaming that on a referee's decision, then you you don't watch football. You've not watched the second half. They were by far the better team. We all said it. All of us said it in that second half. Go and check the watch along the game. You know, it's bad when, if we're regarded as by far the better team, you know, Lobotegi's West Ham we're talking about. Fucking hell, man. Man United. Well, I knew Man United would be awful. I predicted eighth on Orestes channel for a reason. Big up to Orestes always. But, Come on, man. I was ridiculed for that. Just because they won the FA Cup and they supposedly had this great transfer window that didn't really... It wasn't really that good. In the first half, if the chances were missed, we kept missing the chances. We said it. This He's going to tell them, guys, we've just got out of jail. We can't do that again. This We can't play any worse than that. Second half, he brings on three substitutions. They all have an instant impact. From minute one. From the... Actually, straight from the kickoff, they go up. They go up. They ask questions of Manchester United defence. It's simple, people. It's simple. I'm not going to moan about the VAR. I'm not going to moan about a decision about a penalty where they, the other team have been clearly the better team. I'm not... It's not like I'm playing prime Barcelona. Prime Real Madrid. Mm. I'm playing against Man City or Liverpool. Mm. I'm playing against Arsenal away. Mm. And I've got things to moan about. Playing West Ham, we've had a horrendous start to the season. Fact. The title of the watch along, El Sakiko. It was El Shitiko for me, but I know a lot of people wanted to buy into that narrative. We'll put it this way. Ten Hag getting sacked. 
And Lopetegui wasn't going to get sacked after this game. They were going to leave it until the international break. And I think because he's being Man United, he's bought, he's bought his job for another two months unless he loses literally every other game in a row, which isn't going to happen. Maybe we do beat Everton at home. I don't know, but we're definitely losing next week. I can tell you that for sure. Locatelli, the West Ham fans are saying, you know what? Yeah. Locatelli, you know what? The Juventus player. <laughs> Ain't it? Mm. He needs to get out of here. But you know what? He's been given a lifeline. Because Manchester United are in town. Mm. Facts. Table doesn't lie, people. We are where we are. And I told you all about fucking Ineos. Facts, by the way. To me, I'm not going to talk about the manager. Because they, go and check out the fan, fan forum statement from the Ineos. A couple of weeks ago, was it maybe seven days ago? This is a project. Everybody's together. They're back in their man. Any of us are big frauds. They've been big frauds. I don't know why Man United fans. I know they brought in Dan Ashworth and all these people, but um, they gave Bruno Fernandes 300k a week and they kept their inside hog. That should tell you all you need to know. They gave him the money in the summer. So all this about Eric Ten Hag, that, nah, he's secure. He moves and walks around like a man that's secure. Mm. That's why he can play a left back in midweek or the right back, I can play him as a number 10. And then tell us, oh yeah, this will happen with the kid. Jamie fucking Carragher was a striker for England and for Liverpool teams. Did, it, did anybody, did Jurgen Klopp or did anybody, all the different managers who managed Liverpool put him up front as a striker? No, no, they didn't. At the end of the day, he's already put his excuses in. He said the injuries are costing us. And the man was talking last season, like, we're never going to get injuries again. <laughs> <laughs> the man talks like we're not going to get injuries again. So at the end of the day, it's a fat people. You decide. Watch the second half. Watch your captain. Fraud. Watch your captain. I, you know what? I feel a bit sorry for Rashford because I'm like, Bruno was even worse. Yeah, fact. Diego De Lott, I don't think he's had a worse a game for Manchester United than the game we've seen today. That miss, boy. How did he miss that? That's the worst miss I've ever seen in the Premier League. He went past Fabianski and then kicked it well, into the side netting. Everyone in the ground threw it was offside, but we jeered it off anyway. And when we realised it was a goal kick, we were like, that is the worst miss we've seen in the Premier League. That miss will go down. <laughs> As one of the biggest misses, as a that was a Ronnie Rosenthal moment. Go and ask your dads, go and ask your granddads what the Ronnie Rosenthal moment is. When you take the keeper out, you've got an empty net and he doesn't put the ball at the back of the net. So at the end of the day, Bruno Fernandes, Diego Delot doesn't take anybody off. Eric Ten Hag is here to stay, people, except it was shit. Go on, fans. Go on, fans. I just want to say I'm really happy today. Come on, my no, 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 man. I'm really happy. <laughs> I want to see the downfall of this team, of my team, of our team. <laughs> the Eric Ten Hag in us. I'm with you guys now. You know, I'm happy. You guys will find the excuses and I'll accept them. At least when we get relegated, we can play Barnsley. Please relegate us, please, man. Please. Bonsley are in League One. <laughs> relegate us. Because at this point, Nurdin said it, everybody sees it. We all agree. This guy's secure. They're not gonna sack him. You put the title El Saki code, but they're not gonna sack him. That's what I said to Joy. I said to Flawless um in a group that we're in, like, at least Ted Hogg might be gone. And he's like, I don't even think that's gonna happen. And to be fair, Flawless has always maintained that. Surely he is closer, though. Surely he's closer. I don't think he will get... Surely he's closer. Like, Ineos clearly believe in him. That's why they're so fucking stupid. But, anyway. Man United, when was the last time in the first nine games, is it, that we've played? How many games have we played? Nine, ten? When were we 14th last? <laughs> That's a mad start in itself. I've never seen that before. That's a mad start. Go and check that start. We've had some of the most diabolical managers... Yeah, for argument's sake, we can say we've had some of the worst managers, Moyes, whatever, whatever, Mourinho. When was the last time after the first half of the se first quarter of the season that we were 14th? Moyes 2.0 make it happen. Not for us, obviously. We that would be 3.0. But there's only one man that can save them. 
Ineos, I know you're a proper English guys, but how about Scotsman? You haven't had a Scotsman in a while. Bring back that Scottish vibe. What, what do they call it? It's the Theatre of Dreams. Oh, Jesus Christ. That's a cringy nickname now, especially with how bad United are. But you know what I mean? And you will have people tell us that we are uh, numerically able to come top four. Woo! Numerically, we can still get into qualification. West Ham's XG. West Ham's XG, West Ham's XG today was 3.2. Ours was 2.9. That is... And West Ham so. are diabolical this season. Facts. Absolutely Facts. diabolical. Facts. Now, listen, at this point, yeah, I seek, I seek validation by looking at all of this because I don't give a damn anymore. I'll just say as is, I was right. Said was right. Nurudin was right. So why am I not going to take credit for it? We were right. Mm. We were right all along. And they were wrong all along. It's it proof is in the pudding. The table doesn't lie. Whether the players finish their chances or not. Listen, players miss, miss chances, yeah, every game. Dalo had an absolute stinker today. Worst performance of his career, probably. Mm. Worst performance of his career. But at the end of the day, the West Ham manager made subs, made an impact in the second half. Eric Tanak didn't. Guys. All right. That's Saeed. Box office as always. If you, by the way, every video that I reacted to is in the description. So don't worry. If you want to go check out the full video without me pausing it, the link's in the description, man. It's calm. It's calm. But uh, big up to Saeed as always. If you're somehow, if you somehow don't know who Saeed is, you realize why now everyone calls him box office. It's because of that. But let's get into the United view. KG's reaction first. And then we'll get on to flexes. Make sure to like the video, people. Make sure to like the video. Um, give me a second. All right. Let's get. West Ham United to you know, Man United one. The fucking shit place. Sorry, man. I'm going to square at the top, but it's the best way. It's The mu the intro music hadn't even faded out yet. Oh man, this fan base is so broken. <laughs> this is gonna be me next week. This was me against Fulham. It's all I can think of. 14th, bro. 14th. I keep saying to the people, I've said to the people, Man United, overweight FC, bro, and no one was listening to me. They're saying, ah, oh, don't know what you're talking about. As somebody that's been overweight, bro, and like you never see it coming. You never see it coming, bro. It sneaks up. But see, it's only fat people never see becoming fat. Like, they never see it possible. Like, don't you think by the time you got into your sixth crisp packet of the day that, I don't know, maybe this isn't a good idea? On you, you have a, you're wearing a 32, 44 waist, and all of a sudden you're a 44, bro, wearing a 56 reg, <laughs> even a 56 reg jacket, bro. That's a mad thing. You know when, that's not what you expected. <laughs> that's not how you came to the game. But that's what Man United have done now. Man United are a shambolic mess. And because it's happening slowly, people can't see it. It's one of those things. Because it's like, oh, it's been... It's been it, happening slowly. No, it's happening slowly. No, it's happening slowly because if people are not recognising. Remember, our competition used to be Man, Man City. That's our competition used to be. It's not Man City no more. It, you, then it was almost... It was going to be like Aston Villa and all those other teams there. You know, the teams like... Oh, fuck. I can't. No, I don't have YouTube right, premium, leave me alone. Now, we're fighting relegation. Man United <laughs> are talking about one win in one win in nine. Really? One win in eight. What? I saw a stat. I don't know if this is true. Correct me if I'm wrong, people. I saw Man United have won 11 games in 11 months in the Premier League. I could be wrong. One win in eight is relegation form. I don't care who you are. I don't care how you see it. I don't care. Excuse me. I don't care. I don't want to hear none of this stuff. Today's result, not on the manager. But guess what? What about the other result? Why is it our team can't... Everyone goes there and slap, um, slaps West Ham. Facts. Today, listen, if it, park today if you want. But guess what? Is Man United allowed to be 14? In October, it's unacceptable. This is unacceptable from Jose. This is unacceptable from, from um, Ole. This is unacceptable. No manager can come Man United and think this is okay. It's not on. It will never happen at Real Madrid. Why are we standing up for it? I get, I don't want to, like, guess what? How many good, how many good games of football we played? 
Damn. How many games when you can say, you know what, we were brilliant? There was like zero. One team they played from League Two or something, Barnsley. Barnsley, when we scored, I don't know how many goals ever. It was raining goals that day. But guess what? When you try and do in the Prem, we've given we've given West Ham a lifeline. We've given Lopetegui a lifeline. They gave Southampton a lifeline. Southampton dominated them, but Russell Martin's dog shit. They're shit. Fact. What does he do? They manage our first half. We're missing all the chances. We can't score, but it's not a new problem. Is that a new problem, Blex? No, it's not. It's the same problem. We can't score, couldn't score last season. Had the lowest, we had the lowest goal, um, goal, goal scored last season. I hear all of this year, but if I hear any more prop for Garnacho, Fernandez, and Rashford, and even Hoyland from these Man United fans, and they're complaining about scoring, put the two dots together. So we come into a new season. So don't say when it go, people say he's not on the manager. Well, guess what? Who's going to make us score more goals? Why we, when are we going to play attacking type of football that we score all the goals that we need to score? When are we going to do that? Why every game in this? So just imagine, not this competition. The manager's the problem, yeah. But even when this manager goes, you're going to have the same problem with the same players. I mean, like individually. Like Maserari, like actual good players will look better. Like Maserari will look better. Kobe Mainu will look better. Uh, that's it. Like, Lenny Yoro hasn't played yet, but he will look good under an actual manager, I'm sure. De Ligt will look better. Amadiala will look better. Those are the four that I can say. Maybe Xerxes, but I'm stretching it with every other player. Petition in the Europa, let's win our goal difference. Everywhere we go, it's negative goal difference. Or mm. plus one. It, that's a sign. If, if no one wants to look at the facts, the facts are right there, staring your eye. Get this manager out of this club. You can't sack the players. Everyone says, put it on the players, blame the players. When are we going to talk about the players? Brother, guess what? The players are not going anywhere. Maguire's still here. Johnny Evans is still here. I'm not saying Johnny Evans played bad, but I'm saying these players still exist at this club at this time. Even Sancho is still here. As in, as in, we can't get rid of players that want to go. So what Lindelof is still there. You tell him, and then when we do do deals, we're giving them the maddest deal. Anthony's still here. <laughs> now injured, so he's still here. No one's going. Get, so the only way to fix this is by changing a man that's going to um, motivate these players. That's the only way to change this. In, and now you're hating everyone. We're hating all the players now. Why? Because they, we, everyone can see it. This thing don't work no more. It's finished. It's broken. It's dead. And you look at the second half as well, right? Mm -hmm. We've come out in that second half and, and look, look what we've done. Like we've gone from playing you know, some of our best football for 45 minutes. And like you said, it's that thing of, we can't play well for 90 minutes. We, we, a, what a good team would do is go, fucking hell, have we not scored in that half? Don't worry, better chance in the second half. We'll, we'll dust these down. Lopetegui makes three changes. Oh. And now we don't know. Suchek, Somerville and Todibo. Yeah. And we don't know what the fuck's hit us. Two, that's it, three changes. Managerial. He made, done. He, he made a managerial change and our football evaporated. Mm. Where did our football go? Again, all the people, and I'm, you know what? Joe, this is the first time I've actually seen us look better in the second half than the first half. Oh, um, and apart from, uh, well, apart from Crystal Palace, this game and the Palace game is the only time when we've come up better. Like, we usually just even carry on the same stagnation, no matter what the, I don't even know if stagnation's a word, but you know what I mean. Um, like, no matter what, we just stay the same or we get worse. Like usually when we come out for the second half, this is one of the few times where I can say, "Okay, we we actually look better." But I also think it's because Man United are our moments team as well. I don't blame them. It's up to you. However, you want to deep it, understand what this manager's doing. But from my point of view, and I'll speak to the people that understand where Man United are meant to be. 14th in October is unacceptable. Yeah, but I'm not waiting. Because 14th in October is it, 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 not just a. Oh, you had one off day at the office against West Ham, like where the players didn't score in the first half. Yeah. It's from game week one all the way through to That's here. It all counts. Yeah. yeah, there's a reason you're 14th. And look at the company we're keeping, bro. The teams below us are all relegation teams. All relegation, but we're, and we're part of it. We're in a relegation battle, Flex. We. It's mad because they actually are in a relegation battle. I'm not even taking a piss. They, they like at this current moment in time, West Ham United and Manchester United are both in a relegation battle. Because if we're in a relegation battle, they're in a relegation battle. I think people just don't want to say it because it's Man United. They won't get relegated, unfortunately, as much as I'd love to see it. But because, you know, Ipswich, unfortunately, I haven't won a game yet. Southampton are probably the worst team I've ever seen in the Premier League. Um, 
Everton said it's still Everton are technically there. I think they might be above us actually. I don't know who else is there, but Wolves are there. They haven't won a game either, so they won't get relegated. But they're there. They'll be scrapping. I know Chelsea was somewhat there a couple of seasons ago, but this is worse than that Chelsea team. Like I think that Chelsea team would still beat this Man United team. The points um, race to forty points. That's what we're talking about. Yep. Man United, if you get one win in eight, your relegation team. 100%. Your relegation. Relegation four. Relegation four. Thank you very much. We don't know where the wins are coming from. Man United. Chelsea next to home. Oh, forget about oh, it. My my forget about it. <laughs> oh, my days. Chelsea at home. Oh, my God. Oh, uh, Sancho can't even play that game. Oh, fuck. I was looking forward to that. Like, I don't like Chelsea at all, but I, was, I would have liked a, ch- a cheeky little Sancho masterclass at Old Trafford. Just because I like Jaden Sancho. Forget about it. <clears throat> Forget about it. Like I've we I've been able to witness the demise of Man United and it's happened right in front of us. And it's like there's nowhere to run anymore. There's nowhere to you can't escape it. We we are terrible. Ineos had to Ineos now, like, because I'm like, listen, Ineos, make the decision that don't go by the crowd. But Ineos, look at this club and make it Ineos, make the decisions that make sense for the club. Put the club first at every single moment. Right now, if you continue on this, if we continue on the trajectory of we're not going to make any moves, then you're hurting us. Mm. Because let's say, all right, today's not on a manager. Is he going to have the team ready for the next game? No. Like, well, well, that one's Leicester at home in the, on the Carabao Cup in midweek. All right. But, we but, really but I don't know. No. You know, we're not going to be ready for the next game. Well, okay, yeah, so we win that, okay, and then what, what What happens next? Yeah, we beat Leicester in the Carabao Cup, maybe, and then get to Chelsea, and get, yeah, and then get lifted. Cole Palmer. Damn. And then it's the same old, same old, start, stop. It's shit, it's bullshit. Just end it, end it now. End the manager needs to end it now, um, because I we're not growing, and we're going to hurt ourselves. We're going to put ourselves into more, into more issues, more problems, if we continue like this. Man United... We, I was going to predict a 2 1, 2 1. That's what you really felt. That's what I really felt. I didn't want to say draw. I just say draw because I just wanted to be a little bit positive for the people that get upset every time I give a prediction. But guess what? What do you say to them, people that are like you've been? They're telling, me to, they're telling me to do this and have this. I'm saying, well, show me a reason why I should feel differently. It's kind of unfair because KG was also originally Ted Hagen. Like he was all for it. So now when he changes his mind and he sees the light after the Tottenham game, People are calling them negative. This is the problem with people that don't have any respect for content creators. I'm not as big as these guys, but I've had the occasional "Why are you so negative?" We we won, like very occasional because my fan base isn't as big yet. But we're not we, we're not being negative for the sake of it. We're being negative in terms of the fact we're just criticizing what we see. Also, I'm a West Ham fan, and you expect me to be positive. It's a bit different than criticizing a fan of a big six club because you can at least say you are who you are. You know, like I don't know what I'm meant to say. I just say it how I see it. So yeah, I'm saying show me why I should feel differently, or tell me what you're seeing. Give us facts about what you're seeing. Marcel will probably come here and say, "Oh, um, we could have done this or this." He'll find a positive spin to it, or where how many points off the top? But bro. If Marcel finds a positive in this, then bro has bro cannot be helped. Okay, so this is the situation today went as it did. But tell me why Ten Hag, why we should still believe in what Ten Hag's trying to do at this club. I'm waiting. What are gonna say? Been... Looks, they're gonna say, look at the 45 million. That's what that 45 minutes. Okay, but is he is he is he a 45 minute is he a 45 minute manager? What does half a game do? What is where you game? didn't score? What does half a game mean? Like they were saying, I did well in my mocks. What about the excuse my language, but what about the exam? What about it? Because when it comes to the exam, we fail. I'm looking at I'm look when I'm looking at other teams play and they're well coached, well drilled. I'm looking at everybody else play and they even from a setback they'll be okay. Now today, listen, I don't want to skip this pink because I left it out in the Spurs game. When the red card happened to Bruno, I left it out. I said he said I'm not going to waste my time about that. But right now, we must talk about the penalty, bro. We must. We have to. Yeah. Is it Oliver inside the Colonel with under VAR? You stink, bro. That's it. Yours, you stink. That's that decision lets me know that Man United already have a lot of things to deal with. And now we've got to deal with the refs. We've all got to deal with the refs. Every club has to deal with the refs. 
I don't know why every fan base does this. Like, they are the only ones that have to deal with these people. I mean, I've been telling people that Michael Oliver isn't a good ref. Do I think it's a penalty? No, but it's a 90 minute game. But then again, KG has also criticized every other part about the game, and he hasn't made this specifically about the ref. How? This is, again, this is another decision, and I don't understand it. I remember being, I remember last season, Premier League, um, Haaland gets one, we get one in Haaland, but the ball back. Hoyland pulled him back, but pulled him, not yeah. even there. Yeah. We see that in the Premier League, yeah. week in, week out. Yeah, and I do. saw that one given, I've never seen it given again. And I said, wait, so what's going on? I don't know about never given again, that's a bit of a stretch. I think a lot of people are doing that because the hate for Man City is growing, but those decisions do get given. It's just, they're very inconsistent. Like, it was like the Tarkovsky one the other um, the other week against Newcastle, even though that one was blatantly worse. We still see those happen all the time. It's Bro, it's a disgrace. I'm <laughs> sick of it. Man United, do the right thing. Get this manager gone. Get this manager gone. For the people that say you don't understand why we should get this manager gone, look at the t- league table. I refer you to the damn league table. And lastly, we'll go on to Flex. Go on to Flex's fan cam. And, uh, yeah. Hold on a sec, people. Let me just, I don't know why my thing's playing up so much. Give me a sec. Okay, Flex's fan cam. All right. Okay. This is the last fan cam we'll react to. There, there are more creators I could react to, probably, but... Um, at the same time, uh, it's not always uh, it's not always possible, you know. Not always possible. West Ham United two, Man United one, absolute fucking shit show. And you know again, <laughs> not even. Didn't even give it a start. As soon as I, it made me laugh at the KG one, as soon as the intro faded, straight on it with the swearing. I love it. That's exactly how I'd react as well. What? Before I get to the PGML or whatever the fuck their names are and VAR, we have to just get to the players because the reason why we wasn't out of sight was because of each and every single one of them players who had an opportunity to score a goal. Diogo Dallo, open fucking goal, open goal, missed. Garnacho. Two opportunities, missed. Bruno, header, missed. So we can sit here and cuss the VAR and stuff like that, which I will do because Michael Oliver is absolutely disgusting and should hand in his resignation right now. But... I like how he's waited until it's happened against Man United for him to say that, but sure, whatever. I tell you one thing. I tell you one thing, right? You can't. What you can't do, what you cannot do is forget how we capitulated in that second half as well. Now, the reason why Man United have lost uh, have lost that game is because of missed chances and the VAR. But also, let's not act like our team didn't revert back to type. Facts. Because there's a reason why we played well for 45 minutes. And what the hell did we do in the second half? We allowed West Ham back into the game. We, we started losing concentration. They started getting chances. And Lopetegui made three, three uh, changes at half time. Three changes at half time he made. And his team had a reaction. Well, what did our what did our team do? Nothing. Fucking nothing. We are 14th in the league. In isolation, we did not lose this game because of Eric Ten Hag. I don't want to confuse that, right? But overall, what this team is, and the reason why it's 14th, isn't just because of today. And what we've seen so many times is us play well for a half and then not play well in the second half. Mm. So why can't we play well for 90 minutes? Moments players. That is on the manager. That is on the coaching. What's been said at halftime of why they've come out and that's happened. But again, I don't want to go too much in on Eric Ten Hag today because that this game is actually not for that. Because those players, each and every single one of them who have opportunities to score, were disgraceful today. Absolutely disgraceful. To not be leading that game, to not be leading the game, right, from the positions that we found ourselves in is criminal. Absolutely criminal to miss those, those level of chances. And that's a fact. That's a fact. Second half, why are we not able to go forward and sustain that? Why? I tell you why, because we're a shit team. Fact. And the reason why we're a shit team is because the manager and the coaching staff and the work that's been done in the last couple of years has not been good enough. A good team would go, right, 
we haven't got our just dues. We haven't got the goals that we deserve. We've been really, really wasteful. But guess what? We're going we're gonna to keep playing in the same way. Mm. But no, we've got a weak mentality and we don't have a sustainable way of playing. They haven't ever. They have not been the same since they got battered 7-0 by Liverpool. Since they won that Carabao Cup final, they have not been the same. Like we saw it against, funny enough, against us. They've actually lost three times in a row for the first time against us ever in the Premier League. Um, and the first time they lost against us was we literally scored one a goal where Ben Rama passed it to De Gea and he fumbled it in. And we was battling for relegation. They couldn't break us down. That's when Tilo Kera had a masterclass against Marcus Rashford. Rice had a great game. Suchek had a great game. Everyone had a great game. Packets had a fantastic game. Yeah. Like, they have not... Like, they had the game against... What was it? I can't remember what team it was. But they've been battered multiple times by teams they shouldn't be getting battered by, ever. Ted Hag had a good, like, four or five months at Man United. Like, when he recovered after that, uh, Brighton, Brentford, all of that stuff. He started that against. He started the rain against Liverpool, up until January, and then it all kind of fell off from there. But it just took some fans a bit later to see that because he kind of made up for it with the FA Cup. But you should take account the league. You take into account the league finish for Man United because finishing where they finished last season was a disgrace. That I do blame on what's been happening at the football club uh, under under Eric Ten Hag in terms of the lack of progress we've made. That is his fault. But today, in the moment, he could have done no more. He also made the changes. Rashford stunk the place out. Ahmad comes on, doesn't do great. Xerxes comes on. To be fair, got the assist for the goal. Okay, it was off. It was off target, but it doesn't matter. He got the assist, bro. But we should never have been in a position where that goal scored by Casemiro, right, was an equaliser. And the reason why it was a fucking equaliser was because, again, in the second half, the Bozo gene kicks in and they start doing stupid shit. Also, we shouldn't have conceded that goal. Like, Fabianski and every defender there has to do better. Like, I get why Tadiba ran out to try and close the man down, but also you kind of left the man in the back post doing that. But also, if he does run there, everyone in the box should be pointing as... Mark that player. That's been marked at the back post. As soon as I saw that player was free at the back post, I was afraid. The tactics weren't right. The mentality weren't right. So they end up getting back into it. West Ham are a poor, poor side. The side That's... below us, right? Have you seen the side below us? They're relegation candidates. West Ham are now above us. Fact. The sides below us are relegation candidates. It's Wolves. It's Leicester just behind us. Palace. Ipswich. That's it. And then Man United. So everyone who was coming at me telling me I was negative, telling me I was toxic, where are you now? Mm. Because the reason why I'm negative and so-called toxic is because I can see the wood between the trees. Pause. I can see it. We're going nowhere. And and, and like I said, it doesn't matter in what way, shape or form you want to dress it up. We've got one win in eight. Wake up and smell the coffee. Imagine justifying one win in eight. As a Man United fan, you can't and you shouldn't. <clears throat> There's no other way to dress this up. Oh, but we're only this amount of points off of this or we're only this amount. Talk about the fucking points we have got <laughs> and lack of. <laughs> got Chelsea next in the league at home. <laughs> Look at us. Look at us. You've got players you can't finish. You've got a manager who's out of his depth. Yep. You've got results that are, that are spiralling. Wake up! <laughs> so all of this force, if you're going to try and force your positivity onto me, I'm not here for it. I'm not on it. I don't care for it. I will never be unjust. I will never be unreasonable. I will never be knee-jerk and stuff like that. But what I'm seeing is dross. It's trash. And if you can't see that, then I don't, I don't know. I don't know what else there is to say. Now, listen, you can't get robbed like that and not talk about VAR. Robbed is a big word. Michael Oliver, you are disgusting. <laughs> you are absolutely disgusting. To get involved in that, which was never a penalty, never a clear and obvious error that's been made. And now... 
Yeah, I agree with that, by the way. It wasn't a penalty. It wasn't a clear and obvious error. Just find the word robbed quite funny. I think football fans need to get their head out of their own ass. I'm not, I'm no offence to Flex. I'm just talking about everyone in general because our fan base does this as well, where um, every time a refereeing decision gets given against us, there's always we've been robbed. I used to think this as well. But at the end of the day, when you go into a Premier League game, you're going to have awful refs and you kind of just got to look to yourselves. And, and to be fair to Flex, like KG and Saeed have also done, they've mainly put the, everything onto the team rather than the referees itself. And to be fair, they're not doing what Arsenal fans are doing where they just talk about the referee to sidetrack the whole game like they did for the Bournemouth game, like they're doing for the Liverpool game as well, where everything is given against Arsenal. Every every fan base wants to play the victim. Every fan base does this. West Ham do this. I we're gonna have to sit there and hear fucking Michael Owen sit there with 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 Howard Webb and talk about well Michael must have seen this or Michael must have seen that. You should be happy with Howard Webb. I thought Man United fans liked Howard Webb. It was pretty much a twelfth man back in the day. So uh, what's actually happened is is uh you know it's this that and the other. Piss off, man. We don't want to hear that no more. <laughs> you messed up the Bruno red card as well and had to rescind that. It's bollocks. That should never have been a penalty. We've been absolutely robbed by that being a penalty. One thing is there is there being a, a, a draw or something. And again, I'm blaming us more than anything because that game should never have even got to that stage. That is our fault. But what's your fault, Michael Oliver, is giving a fucking penalty to West Ham when they shouldn't have got one. That is your fault. And what's the, what's the consequence going to be for him? Is he going to be struck off the VAR? No, he's probably going to be refereeing whatever the fucking biggest game is next week. Yeah, people say Michael Oliver is the best ref. If Michael Oliver is the best ref in the whole Premier League, then we're fucked. They're all shit. That's what he's going to be doing. He's sick <clears throat> and tired of this shit. VAR, bollocks. What's the point in it? Fact. Ref watch. Dermot Gallagher is going to sit there on Sky Sports. Same thing. It's bollocks. Fact. Had enough of it, mate. So we were absolutely robbed by the VAR. We were. But the whole reason, the whole reason we were in that position is because of ourselves. Facts. We Facts. created more than enough opportunities to put the game out of sight. Garnacho was wasteful. Dallo should hang his head in shame because he had a, whole, a hand in the goal that they actually scored with some of us sleeping at the back post and missed a fucking open goal. I hate sweat. I hate even, I hate even being like this, but it's just, I have to just let it out. I've got to let it out. I wrote Flex being true to himself and being as unfiltered as he can be whilst getting into these big press conference places. I've got to lay it out. It's not even me like doing all the sweat. I hate being like this. But when you see this, you have to just call it out of what I'm seeing. It's terrible, man. Bruno free header. Okay, Fabianski saved that one from Casemiro. How many chances? So that is our own fault. And the fact that we came out how we did in the second half is also our own fault. Yes, Lobotegi made three changes at half time. We should have been ready. We know that West Ham aren't going to play as fucking bad as that in the first half. So you found a back and forth with uh, Ty from Twitter, uh, T Ty from Never a Foul on Twitter. He even said the same thing. He was like, you guys aren't going to be that bad. I'm like, you're in for a real surprise. And I was wrong. Because he, he, he saw it coming, to be fair to him. He, he, he thought we were going to be better. In a second half, um, I, I I argued it. I argued it, but I know some Man United fans are even happy that we won because it means a nail in Ted Hogg's coffin. But he ain't going anywhere anytime soon. So why have our levels dropped? Because we're not a good team. Get your head out of the sand. If you're clinging on to that first forty-five minutes, like oh, but we did do well in the forty-five. That's the anomaly. We never see ourselves play as good as that. The common denominator is what we did in the second half. We see that pretty much over both halves in most of our games. So get your head out of the clouds. If you're trying to hang on to that 45 minutes and doing that whole, uh, do you know what? Actually, there's something there. There's nothing there. Don't let them little flash moments fool you because they ain't fooling me anymore. I fucking had enough of it. No, it's not. It's not. <laughs> Where do we go from here? Fucking hell. What is it? Leicester, who are basically the closest team to us, really, just below us. I think they're a few points behind us. I know it's in the Carabao Cup. God knows. God knows. Well then, that was that. That was that. That was Man United fans having a meltdown. Uh, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that. I might do that more often. I might do that more often. Probably won't do it live, but I'll definitely pre-record some more reaction videos in the future if it's relevant uh, to the situation.
And if you guys want to see that more, let me know in the comments. And make sure to leave a like on the video. Make sure to subscribe if you are new. Social medias are in the description if you want to follow me. The email for the inquiries. I'm on the road to 1K. Let's try and make that happen as soon as possible, people. And I'll see you guys later.